Hello, everyone. Dr. Vaughn, this is, uh, we're going to get an early start on Chapter 11 um, by request. I'm going to take a look at this idea of interval estimation for the chi-squared distribution. Now, in this particular case, we're using the chi-squared distribution to do an estimate of the population variance. We can also do a hypothesis test about the population variance. And the chi-squared uh, is going to be the test statistic, kind of like the normal distribution, the z-test. This is now the chi-squared test. The chi-squared test can be used for not only population variance, which is what we're talking about here, but we'll also use it later when we do um, qualitative variables and looking at the distribution of, say, your preferred ice cream flavor or something along those lines. But for now, let's just focus on population variance. Now, I want to mention a couple of things about notation before we get uh, too much into this. First of all, s. Little s is the sample standard deviation. So s squared is the sample standard deviation. Chi squared has a subscript, and that subscript alpha is denoting the area to the right of that value. And it's even italicized here, the area to the right. That's gonna be important when we go to use the tools either in Excel or these tables to look up values. So um, we're looking at area to the right of that value. And then um, there is the uh, uh, N minus one, which is the degrees of freedom. So N is the sample size and N minus one is the degrees of freedom uh, so if there's a sample size of 20, as they talk about in the book in this particular case, then 19 would be the degrees of freedom. So here uh, you have a formula that kind of bounds the chi-squared values by the degrees of freedom, the sample variance, and the population variance. That's the sigma squared. And they do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. And ultimately, you get to this formula at 11.7, which gives you bounds on the population variance based upon the sample variance, these chi-squared cutoff values, critical values, and then the degrees of freedom and the observed sample variance. So this is what we're gonna do to find a lower bound and an upper bound of our confidence interval for the population variance. We just need to follow these formulas, which means we need the N, the S, the chi-squared values, and then plug it all in in order to get a lower and an upper bound. All right, so let's kind of walk through um, uh, one of the examples that they're doing up over here. And in this one, they're taking a look at a 19 degrees of freedom and they get these chi-squared values. So chi-squared uh, with 0.975. So that means 97.5% of the population to the right, which means that 0 0.025 is to the left. And you can use uh, this table 11.1 and you have to look at the table. Each table seems to be a little bit different. Sometimes they're giving you area to the left. Sometimes they're giving you area to the right. So, um, so we're going to look this up either on a table or I'm going to show you how to find these numbers, 8.907 and 32.852 using Excel. But it's important that you think about right versus left. Now, the reason why they're doing 0 0.025 is because we have a 5% alpha the 5% alpha and you're cutting that into two pieces. And so we're going to have 2.5% to the left and 2.5% to the right. That gives us our two tails. And then we have our 95% in the middle. So the two tails are the rejection regions. If, if we get a chi-squared value less than 8.907 or a chi-squared value bigger than 32.852, then we're going to be in that rejection region if we were doing a hypothesis test. But these same values are used in the calculation of those critical values. And the important thing to realize when you go down to this formula is that this one has that alpha divided by two. So think about this. You know, if I divide by a bigger number, I get a smaller number. So the denominator on the left is going to be the bigger value. And the denominator on the right is going to be the smaller value. So this chi-squared alpha divided by two is actually the bigger one. 32.852, and the chi-squared um, one minus alpha divided by two is gonna be the smaller one, which is uh, this 8.907. So it, you don't on, only have to find these numbers, you have to remember which one goes where. All right, so uh, let me show you how to actually get these numbers themselves, and then we'll kind of put all the pieces together and see if we can't come up with the same result that they did in this example about the confidence interval being uh, between these two numbers, 0 0.0014 and 0 0.0053. So we're gonna kind of walk through their example, but I'm gonna do it using, um, as usual, Excel. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is show you how to use the chi-squared inverse 
formula in Excel. Chi-squared is the distribution that we're doing. We're doing the inverse distribution. And then what you want to look at on here is that this probability is going to be the one that's to the left. So remember, the, 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 the value when we're looking in, in the book is to the right. But when I'm doing this in Excel, I actually put in area to the left. So this 0.975 area to the left is going to be that upper chi-squared value with the degrees of freedom of 19. Um, and, and that is going to be that 32.85233, which is the same number that you see right here. That's that upper one, 97.5 below to the left, which means 2.5% above. Now, if I want this left one, 8.907, then all I need to do is go back to the same chi-squared and just change this to 0 0.025. 2.5% to the left, which means 97.5 to the right with 19 degrees of freedom. And there you're going to get that 8.907 when it's rounded to the four decimal places. All right, so that's how you can use Excel to find these numbers by thinking about right and left and, and the proportion of those. Once you have these two numbers, so let me just uh, put the other one in. I'm just going to copy this down. All right, and then we're going to change this back to the 0.975 to get the upper one. Okay, so now I got both numbers here. This is the, the, the low, and this is going to be the high one. All right, now I'm going to put in the, um, the population variance. So the sample, the, the uh, N, is going to be 20. So let's put that in. The N is 20. So then I'll calculate the degrees of freedom, which will just be 20 minus 1. That's the 19. And then we'll enter the sample variance. Which I think is given to you um, in the problem. Let's see if we can find it. Okay. Right, so right here, S squared is 0 0.0025. 0 0.0025. 0 All right, and I think that that's pretty much everything that we need. Now we're going to put these together to find the low end of this confidence interval. And then the high end of this confidence interval. So for the low end of this confidence interval, what I'm doing is, is this formula right here, the lower bound on the sigma squared. I need to take the degrees of freedom times the sample variance and divide by the bigger of those two numbers. So I'm going to take equals the degrees of freedom times the sample variance and divide by the bigger of those two numbers that I had up here as my critical values. And then for the high one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just take the degrees of freedom times the sample variance and divide by the smaller one of those two. And so this tells me that the true population variance is sandwiched between these two numbers, 0 0.001446 and 0 0.00533. Let's see how that compares to their computation, 0 0.0014 and 0 0.0053. All right, so this gives you the, um, the lower and upper bound of your confidence interval, your interval estimate, of your population variance, we can assume with 95% confidence that true population variance is somewhere between these two values. All right, I hope this has been helpful to get you a good start on population variances and the chi-squared distribution. Talk to you again soon.